Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Professor Hall and today we are focusing on tone, understanding the emotions expressed by a text. So if you've seen some of the other presentations, um, that might help if you haven't, just to kind of show you how some of these ideas connect. When an author is thinking about writing, they think about purpose, the reason why they are writing. They think about audience, the specific intended person or group of people that they want to write to. They consider reception. How will the audience think or what they want the audience to do or think or understand? Um, will the audience accept what they have to say? Will there be barriers there where the audience won't want to hear their message? And tone kind of fits in with that the attitudes and emotions about a subject. So how can I express these ideas and fulfill my purpose having my audience understand um, what I have to say and accept what I have to say? So all four of these things really coincide with one another. And I have another presentation about audience and another one about rhetoric that kind of go into these in a little bit more depth. But what exactly, just for today, what exactly is tone? Tone is the attitude an author takes toward their subject and audience. Sometimes you would say these are the emotions that the author has, the emotions in their text that they want the audience to pick up on and to receive. This idea is connected to mood, and when you get into talking about literature, um, you'll kind of separate these out a little bit further. But the mood is the audience, um, how the audience feels when reading. So the emotions that the audience feels. Sometimes these are linked together. So for example, um, here I've got, I'm going to get my highlighter. The park welcomed children. Laughter filled the air and smiles were contagious. It was enjoyable. So we have some of these words, laughter, smiles, contagious, enjoyable. The author is clearly having a good time. How would it make the reader feel? Well, the reader might feel happy as well to think about um, maybe a memory when they went to the park as a child or when they've taken their children to the park. They might feel a little nostalgia, even though that's not in the passage, a reader thinking back on their past with fondness. That's what nostalgia means. So they might feel that way. But both of these have kind of a positive attitude toward the subject, right? In comparison, the author's attitude here, the park welcomed children, but like most areas overrun with kids, it was loud and noisy. Plus, there was no place to sit. So here, the author's tone is quite angry and frustrated. The reader's mood might also be angry and frustrated. Maybe the reader really identifies with this. They tried to go to a park to have a nice quiet lunch and there were kids running and screaming and not being supervised and there was no place to sit for them to eat their lunch, right? They might, however, be offended. Look, I take my kids to the park. I'm sorry if you have nowhere to sit, but the park is pretty much for kids. That's why there's a playground there, right? So my point with these is to show that sometimes the author's tone might um, coincide with the audience's mood. Their, their words might make the audience feel the same emotions that they feel. Other times, like the second example, maybe they're being very serious, but the audience, the reader might think, oh, you're ridiculous. Like, just find somewhere else to go to have a quiet lunch. Um, so... Sometimes the tone can help with the reception and other times it might turn the audience away so that they don't want to hear the message. What are some words we might use to describe tone? Well, here you can see there are a lot of them. Most of these are adjectives that describe the words, um, the intention with which the words are spoken and the emotions behind them. So is the author amused? And are they trying to say things maybe in a humorous way, giving little jokes and, and making fun of the situation? Or are they anxious about something and worried? Um, maybe they're a little bit tense. Is the author cheerful 
Or is the author gloomy? Um, are they being very loving in their depictions of what is going on or the subject that they're describing? Or are they not? Are they admonishing? Um, kind of like in that last example, those stupid kids on the on the swings taking up my spot, right? So what I think um, we're going to have in a minute some examples of how to find tone, but really my my suggestion here would be you have to kind of read between the lines. Look for the word choice the author uses and their examples, the way that they're telling their story or the way that they're trying to persuade you to do or think or believe something. So how would we describe mood? That's the audience's reaction. Um, again, the author's attitude about the text is the tone and the mood is how it makes you feel as a reader. Well, it's very similar in terms of the words we use. Um, do you feel afraid? Do you feel angry? Do you feel sad? Um, nostalgic, I just talked about. Does it make you reflect on something? Are you inspired or are you infuriated? Um, the, the tone and the mood, again, we're going to use those emotion words to describe both. It just has to do with how the audience feels versus how the author feels. So how do we identify tone? Well, I kind of gave you some tips already, but let's look at an example. This is from a politician. Our immigration policies serve wealthy corporations. Let me tell you who it does not serve. It does not serve you, working American people. Doesn't serve you. When politicians talk about immigration reform, they usually mean the following. Amnesty, open borders, lower wages. Sorry, guys. Immigration reform should mean something else entirely. It should mean improvements to our laws and policies to make life better for you, our American citizens. Now, we have a pretty specific audience here if you look at these words, you and American citizens. And this politician talks directly to the audience. We have you many times to show you that they are writing to that specific group of people, um, American citizens probably who agree with their points. So I have this picture to kind of show a little bit of the tone that um, after this point they went into how to um, deport people who were here illegally and how to build a wall and all of those kind of things. But we have a really negative, angry tone here. Does not serve is repeated three times. Does not serve, does not serve, doesn't serve. So that negative of not, 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 right? We also have should mean something else entirely. Now, the word improvements might be a little bit hopeful, but I would say that overall, this is angry, infuriated um, piece of writing. How would the words make readers feel? Well, it kind of depends on the audience. If you have an audience, a group of readers, who is in favor of policies such as the ones that are being proposed by this person, then they might feel um, also angry. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's go and do something about this, right? If you have a group of people who don't agree with these policies, they might feel anger of a different sort. They might say, um, no, and I I don't agree, and therefore I'm not going to vote for you. Or I'm, I don't agree, and therefore I'm not going to um, believe anything that you have to say. So the, the anger here might be stirred up on both sides. The mood of the audience might be turned toward the speaker or the writer or against the writer, kind of depending on their things that we talk about with audience like demographics and age and beliefs and, and all of that. So let's look at another example on this same topic. Um, this is from an article about celebrating immigrants during Im Immigrant Heritage Month. This story is important because it marks, because today marks the end of Immigrant Heritage Month. We talk about immigrants often, but rarely do we give them a soul, a face, a name. 
We think about them as if they're not real people and instead anonymous nouns. But the immigrant I'm writing about, Natalia Alonso, has a soul, a face, a name, and she died trying to give her family a better life. Okay, now this person's actually talking about their mother. So we have this tone that is unlike the last passage. Maybe you can hear it as I was reading it. A little bit quieter, a little bit softer. We have repetition here too, but it's a soul, a face, a name, right? So it's trying to build sympathy for um, the the topic at hand. And probably I would say sympathetic and also reflective. So this is not just about someone who's anonymous. This is a real person. This is my mother. She gave me a better life and I'm going to kind of reflect on those experiences and tell you about it, right? And the mood that this cre creates for readers, well, again, if you have immigration in your background, if you if your family came here um, recently, or if you immigrated to the United States, you might be interested in reading this and you might feel empathy. That means that you feel the same feelings as the author. Um, if you think that too many people come into the United States and you have a reader who um, agrees more with the first passage, you might have an angry mood um, or a frustrated mood created um, for the audience. So there would be some barriers to reaching some of the readers here. But for the most part, I think if people click on this article, um, seeing this picture here, they might be wanting to receive this message and they want may want to hear more about this story. So they might also be reflective about their own experiences. So that's kind of how tone and mood work together. All right, one more. Um, this is from the CEO of Z Zeusk. I never pronounced that correctly. Um, and here is what he has to say about his immigration story. I was born in Urmia, Iran, to a Kurdish middle-class family. Because my hometown sits at the border of Turkey and Iraq, I was exposed to instability and war from an early age. I dreamed of moving away and doing something great with my life. When I was 17, I moved to Tehran to study computer science. Today, I run a $65 million business in the United States. So this is from an article called Bring On More Immigrant Entrepreneurs. And the exposed to war and instability, instability and war, sorry. We have that phrase kind of showing where this person came from. Then they talk about dreaming of moving away and doing something great. So the tone here might be a little bit reflective, kind of like the last passage. But I think in this specific paragraph, the author is trying to create a mood that inspires readers to do something. So you could say that it's reflective. You could say it's inspirational. Um, and who's the ideal reader? Well, this appeared in e-commerce magazine and also in the Wall Street Journal. So unlike the last one, which was on a a, um, a website about diversity and inclusion and equity where people would want to be reading about those topics. And the first one where it came from a, a political candidate's website where people might want to identify what their beliefs are on certain issues, here they're specifically writing to people who are involved in business and e-commerce or who want to be involved in business and e-commerce, right? So if that's the case, then these are business people and prospective business people who could be inspired by this story. Um, and therefore, um, that would be, yeah, that would be the target audience. People who are interested in business and want to know how other people have been successful. So the tone here, reflecting a little bit on his experiences and then trying to inspire others. Remember, our an author chooses a specific tone to connect to their audience. The tone shows the author's feelings toward the subject. 
Look for clues in the author's word choice, examples, or descriptions to determine tone. This can also be narration if they're telling a story. Tone connects to mood, the feelings and audience experiences while reading. This could be the same as what the author feels and thinks, or it could be a little bit different. Um, the audience tone and mood also connect to the author's purpose, why they are writing. So they have um, a plan. They want the audience to receive their message, and they're trying to do that by using a specific tone. So I hope that this helps um, when you're analyzing things that you're reading. You can think about the author, the purpose, the audience, the tone, how they connect, and um, what the author's goal is. Thanks.